I started as a one-man web developer and one of the things that I struggled with was doing my accounts, raising invoices, everything was uh, quite difficult to use that was around at the time. So I built something for me to use and it took a while for me to realise that actually other companies uh, that were in the same unit as me had the same problem and other co companies around the country had the same problem and then I took that product um, and developed it, like I said, it to other businesses and it went from there. The first time I tried to sell the business was in 2010 and that was because I was, I was keen to sell the business, I was an eager seller. The second time around when it was a success, I was a reluctant seller and because of that there was a very uh, different balance of power. So the first time around I felt like I had to do whatever the potential acquirer asked of me. The second time around I could argue a lot more because I wasn't that fussed if the deal didn't go through and that made a, a big difference to the negotiations. I learnt a lot the first time from growing the business and it, and it would feel like a waste not to put that to use because there was a lot of mistakes made the first time round. But also I know how much energy it takes to start something from zero so I don't think I'd want to start another business from scratch um, but possibly going into business at a later stage. I talk to a lot of people that are, are wanting to start a business and haven't really got going yet because this isn't ready or that's not ready. An analogy I always like to use, if you're driving from London to Manchester, you don't wait until the traffic lights are green before you leave or you'll never set off. So the most important thing you can do is make a little bit of progress and then more as you go on. But don't wait until everything's perfectly lined up because you'll never get started.